Paddock Outdoor Education Center, and welcome to spring. Spring is the time of year when all the plants that were dormant over the winter announce their return with a display of flowers. There's cloud diversity in the world of flowers, and some of that variety can be seen here at TOBC. So let's head out and see what we can find. Now this right here is an eastern skunk cabbage. And these weird leaves down at the bottom, believe it or not, are flowers. Skunk cabbage belongs to a family of plants with a unique kind of flower called a spadix. A spadix consists of a cluster of flowers on a spike or bulb. And in the skunk cabbage's case, it's protected by a specialized leaf called a spathe. The red mottled spathe forms a hood around the spadix, where the plant emits a foul, skunky odor. This odor attracts pollinators to the flower, but it also releases from the plant's broken leaves, which likely dissuades other animals from eating it. Skunk cabbage is the first plant to flower in the spring, thanks to a really rare trait among plants. Skunk cabbage is thermogenic, meaning that it's capable of producing heat. This heat helps it to melt any snow that may still be on the ground in early spring and start attracting pollinators. You might mistake this yellow petaled flower for a dandelion, but it's actually a different flower named coltsfoot. It gets its name from the shape of its leaves, which look like a little horse's footprint, but you won't see the leaves in early spring when the flowers are blooming. The leaves first appear almost scale-like on the flower's stem, before growing out after the flower has been pollinated and gone to seed. You can contrast this with dandelions, who in early spring have their leaves, but no flowers. Considered invasive in some areas, coltsfoot was likely brought to North America intentionally by colonists from Europe, where its leaves were used for medicinal purposes. It grows well in disturbed areas, like alongside roads and the edges of trails. The trail lily is named for the way that the mottled pattern on its gray-green leaves might resemble the pattern on the side of a brook trout. It has bright yellow flowers with six petals that pull back from the flower, which droops down slightly. Trail lilies form colonies, and where you find a few flowers, you'll likely find the leaves of dozens of others. This is because it can take a trout lily up to seven years to flower, and in addition to producing seeds, trout lilies can also spread their colonies via cloning. A trout lily will produce something called a drooper, a specialized stem that grows out from the bulb of a mother plant before diving into the soil, where a new genetically identical plant will grow. Because of this process, some trout lily colonies are believed to be almost 300 years old. Trout lilies and coltsfoot are both members of a group of flowers known as spring ephemerals. Ephemeral means something short-lived, and you can see this in the life cycle of these flowers. They tend to be found in wooded areas where they try to grow, flower, and produce seed in the short window of time before the start of the growing season and the arrival of tree leaves, which shade out smaller plants and make it hard for them to grow. At this point, ephemerals die back to their roots for the rest of the year. Not all flowers grow straight up out of the ground. Many trees have noticeable flowers as well, like shadbush, also known as serviceberry. The flowers are five spindly white petals growing in clusters from the branch tips. Shadbush can also be identified by its bark, growing smooth with faint vertical lines. Its reddish fruit ripen in the summer and are popular with both animals and people. The tree gets its name from its association with the shad fish, which begins swimming upstream to lay their eggs at about the same time as the shadbush flowers bloom. The other common name, serviceberry, has a more somber history, tied to the belief that blooming of the flowers in the spring meant the ground was now thawed enough to dig graves and perform funerals for those who had died over the winter. Thanks for learning with us today. Now it's your turn to head out and see what kind of flowers you can find. Maybe you'll notice the flowers that we talked about today, or perhaps you'll find something new. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.